Yo, 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 we live on location, Los Angeles, California. We came out here for a very, very Legend. special reason. We didn't survive the hurricane and some more stuff, yeah, ain't it, yes, Black? But we, yes, hey, sir. listen, we blessed. <laughs> we got hey, we got the A team today. We yes. got Hall of Fame greatness, one of the best ever to do it on the legendary. basketball court. The legendary Cheryl Dean Miller. I appreciate that. We Q appreciate it. Q and D. Yes, Q this is special. Y'all tap in. First of all, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Cause this is this crazy to me. Cause coming up, we always wanted to be interviewed by you, and you know you having a good game if we <laughs> if you interview hey, that, us. That, that's and true. now we are interviewing you. And I hate to interrupt you, but I'm I'm going to. Cause Darius, Darius, you were the funniest interview <laughs> that I ever had in my life. First of all, you the first person, mm -hmm. first athlete, first pro athlete to sit there, yes ma'am. <laughs> Before I even asked the question, yes ma'am. And I was like, I, in the back of my mind, I'm like, okay, Darius, look me in my eye. Are you looking at your feet? You were looking yeah. in the stands? Yeah. You were looking everywhere. Trying to be, but, shy brother. Oh my gosh, but one of the most polite young men to come straight out of high school and to have the poise that you did, very impressive. Thank so you, I had, thank I had you. to give you due. Uh, thank you, I appreciate that. Cause Q be hating on me, cause I appreciate that. Q, okay. Q you were funny as an interview. <laughs> like, interviewing you was easy. <laughs> all they had to do, so Q, and they just give it to you all, show, let me break it down. <laughs> we were getting killed on the board. Yeah. <laughs> Elton wasn't, yeah, shot wasn't falling. <laughs> Corey, Corey just, he was not playing any defense. I was like, eh, okay, all right, well, thank you. And I had to grab the mic from you, but, man, I love watching you guys play. And thank on you. and off the court, you guys were just true gentlemen. So I just, Thank you, thank you. We definitely honor. appreciate it. But thank you now for coming on our show. It's an honor and a pleasure to I have you. That. It's an honor for me to be here yeah. on your show. I know this is a tough question for you. Sure. So, but... Who's the first person to bust your ass? Ooh, the first person. Oh, man. It was 1964, the doctor, mm. when I was born. Oh. <laughs> that was Hello. it. Hello. Ain't nobody tapping. I'm telling you. <laughs> so, you so, like, answer your question. It was the yes. doctor when he, he, when he <laughs> bap. And woke me up when I came out of my mom's womb. That's the only person. <laughs> That's the only person. I understand. I, understand. I yes. definitely understand that. So who put the ball in your hand? Who made you love the game? I uh, <laughs> just sitting on the steps. I have two older brothers, and Saul Jr., the oldest, and Daryl, and then of course Reggie and I. You know, a year apart, and it was just sitting on the steps. We couldn't have been more than six or seven. And they were playing with their friends. And any time the ball, you know, went on in the bushes or in the front yard, we have to run, run grab off, it, grab it, dribble it, it, and then kind of cross over it. <laughs> but if it went out of bounds, sit down. You yeah. couldn't get back on. Couldn't get back on uh, on the court. But it was my two older brothers and them betting on Reggie and I against their friends. That mm. was fun. How is it being in a family that's so competitive? Because, mm -hmm. like, sometimes expectations when you're in a family that's so competitive and the expectations are so high, it gets funny. Somebody get left out. So how is it being in a competitive? It, it, was, it was tough because everything was a competition. Yeah. We couldn't even sit down for a normal, like, game of Monopoly without <laughs> somebody cheating. Somebody <laughs> said, and I made sure I was always the banker, so I was always loaded. Yeah. You know, and people are, all of a sudden couldn't count, and so when you landed on the wrong one, but everything was competitive, playing spades, playing, you know, tic-tac-toe, everything. But the good thing about it is with the, the Miller kids, we could kill each other. We could beat up on each other. But God forbid somebody on the outside tried to challenge <laughs> yeah. them. Now, that was a wrap. It was a wrap. But that, it was iron sharp and desire from my older brothers, Saul J and DK, all the way down to my sister Tammy. When did it turn where you was feeling like, like I'm, I'm better than everybody? I never... I never thought I was better, to, I'm being real honest about this, I never thought I was better than anyone, but there was something about the ball being in my hand that just came easy. It was natural, like breathing. I and mean, you guys know that, where you just yeah. pick up the ball and everything else just fades away. And I remember our next door neighbors, um, 
picked up the newspaper, ran over to her house, and I was 13 at the time. And there was some chatter, and people were coming to watch my games. And I was on the front page of the sports section. It said, she's 13 and she can play. And I remember my dad reading it, and we were reading it together, and I was excited. What well, man? Right. I made it, Dad. I made it. He crumpled it up, and he tossed it away. And I go, you know, I'm thinking, well, Dad, what's up? He goes, because if you believe that, all the good things, then mm-hmm. I want you to understand you have to believe all the negative things. Mm-hmm. You can't have it both ways. So that, that was those teachable moments. I don't know if he meant, you know, knew where I was going, yeah. but that was the thing. You can't believe what people write or say. It's who you are. It's what you create in your head and your heart and your family. How did you decide to go to Riverside, really sad Polly? <laughs> you want the truth? Yeah. We lived in a neighborhood I was supposed to go to another school, high school, Ramona. Two older brothers went there. That's where we were going. Well, I had a habit of, you know, playing basketball and chirping a little too much, and I was a bit of a hothead. <laughs> um, and some guys were riding around and, you know, making fun of me. So one of the guys got off the bike. And he pushed me. Yeah. And it only took one push. And next thing I know, he's <laughs> on the ground. My roller brothers are running out because there's five other kids and they're trying to jump on me. And I'm just like beating them down. Well, <laughs> come to find out that their father was part of a gang in Riverside. Mm-hmm. And they said the minute I set foot on Ramona's campus, they were coming for me. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, dad said, we got to move on up like the Jeffersons. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we had to move. Did you, what did you know about the school before you went there? Did you know anything about their basketball history? I had played with a lot of the players, yeah. against them more so because of the neighborhood. Yeah. And so we, it was a natural transition. We had to, to move to a different neighborhood. Pauley High was an up-and-coming program, hadn't really you know, done anything yet yeah. and had a solid team and it just seemed like a natural fit. High school level basketball, now you're taking another step up. Mm-hmm. How was that for you? Competitive. Uh, I just thought there was only a handful of girls that played basketball and played at a high level. Yeah. Well, now there's some ballers out there and everybody's competitive and I've got a target on my chest and on my back. Yeah. So I had to elevate my game. But all the way from the time I picked it up, like I was telling you guys, I only competed against the guys. Yeah. That's all I knew. Mm. So playing against the women, there was, there was no fear. Did it feel like a downgrade? It did. When I was in seventh and eighth grade, when I found out, I tried out for the boys team. And we, I had kicked their rear ends the whole time. So you go to from elementary school to um, the middle school, and so they were competitive people and dads who remembered me, and uh, their daughter, you know, a girl beat their son. Right. So the coach, I came out, tried out. He said, the only way you're getting on this, uh, on this team is you beat my son, a game of one-on-one. I was like, okay, let me get my jersey fitted. I was ready. <laughs> right. Bam, this, you know, this is nothing. <laughs> I'm like, okay. So beat him, one to 11. <laughs> And I looked at the coach, 1 to 11, and I gave him the ball first, and it was around. (laughs) (laughs) I said, 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 come on, Larry, you got one chance. One chance, here's the ball. You and Reggie being a year apart, did y'all ever play, like younger years, play on each other's team, like y'all was on the same team? We never played on the same team, even in the family. Mm. It was always the oldest, Saul Jr. and I against Daryl. And Reggie. Oh, okay. So the winning team that I was on, and then Reggie was on the losing team. Bless yeah. his heart. So, <laughs> <laughs> so but like, no, they, we never, not we you never. Ball or nothing? No, we never ever played on the same team ever. When you got the pie, did you play uh, varsity your first year, or did you, how did, how did that go? Did you have to, <laughs> look at you. I just, I, what, <laughs> kid, what did I'm I, sorry. what did I, <laughs> <laughs> what did I do? I just looked at you. You're so handsome. I just simply smiled. It was a great question. It had no, a it nice wasn't. flow to I'll it. I'll take the whole question back. It was so so how was it for you when you got the poly and you got to varsity as a freshman? And how was that for you? I thought we do the whole take that out, everybody. That didn't happen. She gave me a look like, are you serious? I have right no, idea it 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 no idea what he's talking about. No idea what he's talking about. 
<laughs> no, it was just uh, you know we had a great we had a great team, great high school team. You know, for for girls to come together and us to play at that level, uh, it wasn't a matter of making a team. It was a matter of what were our goals, mm. and it was to you know win our conference, you know their school, and then go on from whatever that was, and that was CIF, mm. and. We hit the ground rolling and never looked back. Never looked back. And packed gym. Yeah. The first time we, you know, we played and it got bigger and bigger. bigger. And so I was blessed. When did you find out you was nationally ranked? Like your name was. There was an, um, it was called the Parade All American. Parade All American. Remember Parade yeah, All American? So the man, that's you know and <laughs> Parade and Parade, Street Street exactly. Yeah. So you would have to wait until Sunday to get the magazine yeah. to see. You know, exactly. you turning, you yeah. turning. I don't care what happened to somebody over here. Somebody died <laughs> yeah. or whatever. You know, or how to grow a plant. Yeah. And there it is. You had first team, second team, and third team, fourth, yeah. all the way down. Yeah. Freshman year. In high school, I made the fourth team, uh-huh. and that was unheard of because I was the first freshman to ever to be the an, all, an all American. Right. Yeah. Outside of Ann Myers, and Ann Myers, UCLA Bruin, Hall of Famer, you know. So she was that was the target. That was the yeah. you know the bar. Yeah. So for me to get fourth team, my dad said, "Look, you're four. Each year I want you to get better." So I went from four to two, and then. Junior, senior year, it was just a matter of uh, first team now who was the best player in the nation. Yeah. That's what I wanted. I wanted by my senior year, high school, mm. I wanted to be the number one play, uh, person, basketball mm. player in the nation. So who were some of the women? Like, Because like, in your day and age, it, it wasn't a WNBA. It wasn't a, 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 a league that you can... View there and, wasn't and, a W. Yeah, there, there was barely a television. So or a television yeah, station. I, yeah, I know it was hard it? to even see somebody hoop. I know you can see their name quicker than you can actually see them actually hoop. So who was some of the women that we know or may not know that as you was coming up through high school that you seen was like, oh yeah, them was some of the ones. I believe I was around thirteen or fourteen, watching um, and just snippets and a little bit of the 1976 women's Olympic team play. Yeah. Mm. And I saw Ann Myers. Mm-hmm. And here's this white girl, blonde hair kind of short, knee pads that were, the, back in the day, they were about this big. Yeah. Diving for everything. Every loose ball. Every 50, before there was a 50-50 ball, that was her ball. Yeah. Right? And she ran it and she played, she was, she played bully ball, could get, you know, just, and I'm like, that's, that's the one. Yeah. That's the one. So it was the Olympics is where I wanted to get. And then there was Lynette Woodard, who, you know, she was, should have been no more for her college play, but Holland Globetrotters. She yeah. was my teammate on the 84 Olympic gold medal team. Mm. So, and Lynette was that forward who could get to the basket and she had all the moves. You know, she could finger roll, you know, and do all these things. And we didn't have the three points. See, people don't realize I never had the three point. Yeah. At all. Never, Even in college, had. never. Yeah. So you shooting it deep. Man, I, I, <laughs> I came across, I was like, Steph, I came across uh, half court. You better be guarding me. Walk me through the game where you scored 105 points. Like, what what, what happened? Like, I, obviously you <laughs> blacked out, but, like, just walk me through that whole experience and, and then the How you feeling that. before the game? Like, everything was... It was a normal, just a normal game. Not, you know, the competition, the, the team we were playing wasn't a very good team. So yeah. I just remember, I can't remember his name, but one of the students at the school, he said... Uh, how are you going to score tonight? No one's ever asked me that. And I go, I don't know. He's like, can you give me 60? I said, 60 points? I said, that's all? He goes, yeah. I said, okay. I'm going for 60. But didn't feel anything. So I'm in the warm-up, you know, shooting my shots and getting warmed up and everything else. And I just crossed over, pulled up, never did my life, and hit a shot with my left. I said, oh, my gosh. (laughs) <laughs> it's going to be one of those nights. It's going to be one of those nights. 
And by halftime, I believe I had 65. Mm. <laughs> and, but guys, I wasn't the only one scoring. Yeah. My teammates were, they were getting their fair shots in, they were getting their licks in. But I just remember coach pulling me out. There were two minutes to go in the game, and everybody in the stands was going crazy and jumping around. And um, I sat down, still didn't know, no recollection. I just thought I had maybe 70. Yeah. And coach goes, Do you know what you just did? I said, No. He goes, Cheryl, you scored 105 points. I'm surprised they didn't stop you at 100. Like. I, I was, no, absolutely. Why didn't they? Yeah. But then the baller in me said, two minutes more. If I'd have had those last two minutes. Then I'm looking at the coach cross side like, <laughs> but two minutes, y'all. But yeah. that was, but it wasn't anything. You know, you have one of those games where it's, you, you do black out. What was yeah. that like the next school that you had to go to school after doing that? Like, what was that like walking through the school and walking through the hallways after scoring 105 points? Man, if I could, first of all, I was the first Michelle Obama on that day. <laughs> that next day. <laughs> You feel me, I walked up and just walked in. <laughs> just walked up, going to my classes. Everybody was lined up, and I was just like, you know, if I had known what a presidential wave was, I would have done that. <laughs> you gave the advice. That was, that was it. It was the first time in my high school career as a student athlete. I had no homework that day. That is dumb. I had no, no. homework. Yeah, yeah. That, that was that. the talk. That was it. <laughs> that was it. Could it have been anybody else other than USC? Oh, yeah. Was oh, yeah. somebody who almost got you? Yes. Yes. And what's crazy, guys, and I, I want to share this quick with, uh, with you. My father passed away. I'm um, sorry. Uh, that's, yeah. that's okay. Yeah, 92. Oh, that's uh, right. He, he lived a good one. Come on. I told him, go to sleep, man. It's yeah. time for you to go to sleep. Shut them eyes. Well yeah. done, sir. Yeah. Well done. And so, of course, we selling the house and we had to get everything out of it. And I'll be doggone guys, if my dad and my mom, they were hoarders, they kept everything. everything. You know it. <laughs> I'm talking about, I was reading the last couple of days, letters from Pat Summit, you know, handwritten letters that I read all of them, but came close to playing for Pat. Um, I wanted to say close to home. And you guys have to understand the client, not only the client, but the rules back then. Schools couldn't fly us out. And we didn't have the money yeah. to fly to Louisiana Tech or Tennessee. Yeah. Or, you know, it wasn't right. free. It came out of your pocket. So yeah. um, that was one of the main reasons why I had to stay close to home. But it was Louisiana Tech was the hardest one. Sonia Hogue and Kim Mulkey yeah. and all those guys. That was the that was a school. UCLA and Billy Moore, they were close. They they had a little bit of an edge. Yeah. But it was it was the McGee twins. You can't <laughs> come on. Yeah. And Apollo McGee. Yeah. They 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 came on my recruiting trip. They came to my house. And, you know, they were nice and coach left to go talk to my parents. And so all of a sudden, you know, Pam's here and Paul is over there on the couch and we're just relaxing and talking. They start inching in closer. And closer, I'm like, it's getting kind of, where's the room? Where's the space? And then Pam goes, look, I'm just going to tell you one thing. You could play one or two years with us or two years against us, with or without us. What you going to do? <laughs> and I was like, okay, 6'3", 6'3", 6'2", and she's like, and we going to win some championships. I said, all right, I'll sign. And that was it. Mm. That's all they had to say. They stayed the night, made sure that I, you know, I didn't have any second thoughts, made sure that phone didn't ring. <laughs> that was it. Mm. SC all the way. So getting to college, and that's another step up. Yeah. Another level up. Mm -hmm. Knowing the firepower that you got, but there's firepower out there. Like you say, Louisiana Tech, you know, yep. Tennessee, like – how was that level for you and, and being able to go as far as you went? College was, that was difficult. Not, not from a physical, but mental. Because I didn't realize 
as a high school senior, over 100 schools are recruiting you, and you only get the chance to select one. So yeah. you know folks are going to be hot. Yeah. <laughs> so they, yeah. they, yes, yes. You they the go, enemy hey. now. And it's the same thing. You As a rookie, you coming in, you automatically yeah. have a target yeah. on yeah. your backs. So everybody's coming after you. And they're... They don't care you just came out of college. They sure don't care you just came out of high school. There's yeah. no respect for that. So you got to you, you got to earn it. And it was the same way. And it was the doubt. I felt like I had to start all, all over, over again. again. Yeah. Different mentality. Um, I had to learn the off court was harder than the on court. I had to learn how to select my friends, better friend selection, mm. who was going to be my core core circle. Mm-hmm. Um, I had to learn how to, I couldn't have rabbit ears anymore. You know, I couldn't, you do care. And I, you know, I'm a softie and I, I do hear things, but you can't take it personal. Yeah. You can't take it personal. And that, that was the hard, it was the emotional um, struggle. And yeah. it's a battle. Your freshman year, you come right in with, with all the accolade, but, but y'all win it. Like, you were L.A. representing, and you put on for the, like, to me, when we were here, we had the feeling that, like, USC was the hood school between USC and UCLA. That was hey, hey, our hey, hey, I don't know. I'm not trying to be no, offensive, no, California. No, I'm just saying, no, we, that, when I, we was I, looking at it, we was like, man, I kind of That is see. accurate. Okay. They like okay. the Clippers to the Lakers. That yeah. was that, no, that was straight up. So, that that was, was, no, so how did that feel no. for you to go to that, you know, that school and then... Yeah. Everybody know the history with, you know, John would know that, but then you you come in as a freshman and put on for the city like okay, that. Let, let me just put it in the greater context. You got L.A., <laughs> you know the area, mm-hmm. the SC, yep. and born and raised in Riverside, which was the glorified Mayberry. <laughs> so it was predominantly white, so right. everything's a little slow, y'all. We, yeah. You know, <laughs> y'all. we just we just missing the how you know the horses and the cows, but it's very country. Right. Yeah. Now I go to L.A. and it's like, oh, hey, 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 watch out, you know, <laughs> you know all this kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that helped me on the court because yeah, my head was on the swivel. I oh, heard no swivel, way. Hey, around. hey. <laughs> hey. Making sure, but it was um, eyes wide open, like the lights and cameras, and it was literally lights and cameras. Uh, the men played before us, yeah, and that was the wrong thing to do with a bunch of arrogant women, yeah, <laughs> who is we're we're battling Louisiana Tech, yeah. right, one and two for the nation. And the men have to play before us, and so they would come off the court, and we would kind of slap them on the rim. Thanks for warming up the court. That kind of stuff. <laughs> we would clown them. Just clown them. That's wild. I can't and then, the, and then the crowd would come. They would come to watch us play. So Dang. now that's a whole other additive of trying to keep the egos on the team. But man, you're talking about veterans from the Twins to Juliet Robinson. They were the ones that, especially Juliet. Check it at the door. I don't care what happened in class. I don't care if you failed an exam. I don't care if you broke up with, you know, your boyfriend, girlfriend, dog, cat. I don't care. Mom and dad cut you off. I don't care. Mm -hmm. Check it at the door because it was all about business. Mm. And if you didn't, they'd make you pay. We had Linda Sharp, our head coach, never had to police us Mm -hmm. because we had that type of leadership. We all know, like, the final four is like, that's a... That's a, a a monumental step in the process and one of the bigger deals played a lot. How was it to get there? You know, like you said, you y'all looking at Louisiana Tech the whole way, you get to the final four and they on the other side and it's like, what are we gonna do? We're freshmen. And well, there's freshman five and then our upperclassmen and Coach Sharp scheduled us to play on the road, and this is early in the season, when we still trying to get our heads wrapped around we're in college. Mm-hmm play at Tennessee, and then back-to-back games. Then we would go to Louisiana Tech and play them at home. Louisiana Tech's opening up their new arena, Uh, 15,000, and it is packed. Crazy, man. We hate you, Cheryl. We got (laughs) I don't know if you guys remember, you know, we had to go to Georgia. Georgia 
the crowd had, you remember the movie Ghostbusters? <laughs> right. Yeah. They had a beautiful photo of me with that big circle, red circle, and right uh. through my mug, <laughs> holding it up. I was like, dang! <laughs> but it's a good photo. <laughs> but it was stuff like that. And we went in there and swept them, and that's never been done. But Coach Sharp said, we, I have to put you guys Battle through tested. the gauntlet. Yeah. Battle test. Who were the freshman five? It was myself, Rhonda Wyndham. There was uh, Jamea Bond. We also had, there was someone, oh, man, you know what? I can't believe I left her out. She wasn't a freshman, but hands down, the baddest baller on our team, Cynthia Cooper. Cynthia and Cooper. she came off the bench. Mm -hmm. That's how solid, how tight, and how tough. She came off, off the, the bench. bench. With that score. That's tough. That's bomb. So we were, we were ready to go. And as and soon as we hit the final four, it was like, it was all about the trophy. It was all about the rings. Back to back, like them two intense seasons, like going all the way to the finals, winning it back to back. How was that for you? That was tough for us as a team and our bond. It's easy. I shouldn't say it's easy. Well, I am going to say it's easy. It's easy to win that first, that first title mm -hmm. because actually no one expected us to. to do it, yeah. You know, so the expectations are very low. But now when you as a team, as a university, have that pressure to repeat, now everybody knows how you play. Yeah. And, and not only do they want to beat you, but they're collabor right, collaborating yeah. how to beat you. They're sharing notes yeah, and scouting reports is. and stuff. They so definitely is. Coach Sharp realized how difficult it was going to be to, to repeat. Our biggest issue how, was not to, was to, to lose our humility and to lose our bond and to start thinking that we were better, certain players were better than, than the other. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. And so I was the most humble person on the team. Until my ego jumped out of my chest. And it was a wrap. You couldn't tell me anything. I was, <laughs> man, if I was James Brown, I'd be wearing that, that, jet, that coat and coming into practice, having somebody take it off and then go warm up. It was after the championship. <laughs> After the championship, yeah. so I got a finish. ring. Yeah. My head is that big. Back in the day, we had they called it Jerry Curl. Mom was a wave nouveau. You couldn't wave tell me nouveau. nothing. <laughs> Put that activator in. It was going Man, down. Talk about on. how good did it feel when you won the chip? Did when you punted the the ball in the air? Like how how? <laughs> <laughs> okay, for real, for real, guys. I half the stuff that I did on the court, I had no. It wasn't like okay, if I if this happens, I'm gonna do this. Oh, it punt was that <laughs> no. It soon as I first of all, we could have lost the game. Our point guard got picked from behind. The ball heads down the court. It's a layup. It's between Cynthia Cooper and a tech player. Now, you got to understand, Cynthia Cooper and defense, right. <laughs> it ain't going to happen. Mess, yeah. So I'm trailing the whole play, and I see Cooper, and I'm like, man, we're going to go out like this because Cooper ain't going to do nothing. I know Cooper's going to try to block her, like block her shot. Cooper stayed in, stood her ground, took a charge. Took a charge. Took a charge. I grab her. Off the floor, I'm jumping around. It's it, I, and I'm and everybody's like, "Sure, we still have a couple seconds." I said, "No, Cooper took a, a, sure. took a charge. <laughs> that's a game. That's a wrap right there." But when that happened, uh, yeah, you. But you couldn't tell us in the second year to repeat was difficult because we had to reel in. Not and I, I'm going to be honest. I, I let my ego jump out of my. You couldn't tell me anything. Number one, you couldn't tell me anything. Then I'm on the Grammys. <laughs> with Donna Summer, uh -huh. with her hit song, She Works Hard for the Money. Yeah. Okay, so you, I'm on stage. <laughs> so Donna Summer's out there, you know, she's singing. I've already gone through rehearsal, so me and D, I'm calling her D. Hey, D! <laughs> she's like, oh, man. <laughs> Wave, I'm like, yeah, that's my girl. That's my girl. We're going to be collaborating on a song after this. Feeling myself. <laughs> so... So this is going on. So I got Donna Summer. She sings, she works hard for the money. Mm, 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 so hard for the money. Right? 
So then my part comes on. So you see two people, like, they have the rims or holding mm. basketball rims. Yeah. So I come on stage, doing my little thing, dribbling in between my legs and all that around my back, and da 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 and I go duck on the thing, grab the ball, go duck on the thing. And now she's coming, and she's singing the, the, the hype of the song. Yeah. And then I'm holding the ball. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> so everybody at S, everybody's seen it. You couldn't talk to me for about a month. <laughs> and I met Michael Jackson. <laughs> oh. Where you meet Michael Jackson? At the Grammys. At the Grammys. At the Grammys. He had the glove on. I remember. Oh, man. Is that the is that the year he did the one? I walk? met him. I'm telling you. <laughs> oh my God. Hey pretty baby, what's up? Oh, you man, couldn't Mike. tell me anything. You can't girl. tell you meet Mike. You can't. Hey, you meet Mike. You can't tell you nothing. Ego, ego, e e ego. Can't, bigger than you the meet Mike. Rooms. <laughs> man, if I could have got away with wearing a glove on the court, like Mike, I'd have done it. <laughs> when did the culture shock hit that you don't have your two leaders no more? Like you win them two championships, you get that so 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 much success, and then you know the leaders. Like it's a high. You don't got them two big. Big girls down there that's, that's taking care of the paint. A hey, reality is no joke. That first game, and I, you know, I'm, I'm Who still. Who was against? I, I don't know, but <laughs> all I know, it was close, and we should have beat them by 100. Mm -hmm. There's not my bigs. There's not Paula, you know, mm -hmm. who in the trail, you know, hitting that, you know, jumper. The free throw line jumper. At the jumper. elbow, elbow, yeah. elbow, elbow. And Pam just beasting down low, block to block. There's none of that. Um, so now I've got to up my game, yeah. elevate my game. The wonderful thing is Cooper. Mm. Now Cooper, Coop. Cooper's coming to her own. Yeah. And one thing about Cynthia Cooper, watching her playing against her in high school a little bit in the summer, being her teammate, and then she disappears once her – Collegiate season uh, career is over. Don't hear from her. She comes back from Italy. You got to understand. She grew up at, she played at Locke. She played in the ghetto. Yeah. I'm talking about the ghetto. <laughs> and so she comes back speaking fluid Italian. Um, her game elevated. is like, it's not elevated. It's through the roof. Through the roof. Hmm. Hands down. Talking about a transformation of a player, the best player in the WNBA, there was no question. Yeah. And I'm looking at teammate, superstar, incredible. How was it to make it on the Olympic team in, in 84? The best way to kind of describe it, freshman year, national championships, sophomore year, when my second at UCLA on their court, it was wonderful. And we beat <laughs> uh, in the finals playing against Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And Pat Summit is the Olympic coach. Mm. So things start kind of slowing down where I'm thinking, okay, this is Olympics. It's in my backyard, you know, in Los Angeles, playing in the final game. Again, I don't know why I did a half of the things that I did, but I did. <laughs> We're killing them. We're winning. The game is, you know, and uh, there was a bet before the game. Sure, I dare you. <laughs> this is, I think it was Cynthia Cooper. I dare you to do something. I'm like, do what? She was, we know we're going to win this. I said, just do what? She goes, I want you to do a cartwheel. I said, during the game? And I said, okay, I'll do a cartwheel. You know, just knowing I wasn't going to yeah. do it. Well, anyways, got caught, caught up, make a great play. Game's rolling out, and I got fouled, and I'm by Tennessee's bench. Mm. And I do a cartwheel <laughs> in front of Coach Summit. And she's just sitting there. She's standing on the court, and she's just looking at me. Deadpan doesn't say anything. And then I didn't think about it. I was just, you know, celebrating. Yeah. So now I've got, I've, I've got to play for this woman. And, guys, she hated me. I'm talking about every time she got the opportunity to break me down, this woman would do it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do it. If she could have got away with not starting me, yeah. she would have done it. But the wonderful thing that happened 
And when I say that, she, she really gave it to me. I was having a really bad game in Taiwan, and I got low bridged, fell on my back, and the ball was coming through the net, so I just kicked it. Just out of frustration, no big deal. Going at halftime, the whole team's not playing well. She has everybody stand up, lines us up, goes down the line, you know, just giving to, handing it to everybody. She comes to me, and I got a knot in my throat, and she, and she, she passes me. I was like, oh, thank you. Lord, I pray I will never do anything else. <laughs> thank you, Heavenly Father. We go, we say, okay, da 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 da, USA. We go to walk out. And she goes, wait a minute, I forgot one special person. <laughs> Cheryl Miller, <laughs> come here. And I was like, man. So, yeah, yes, coach. She says, no, I want you to come close because I want you to hear it. Hear it. And she's like, this far, like from here to here, nose to nose. <laughs> I will win or lose a gold medal without you. You are not the best player on this team. Now, as confident, I, I told you from the very beginning of this interview, I'm sensitive. <laughs> yeah. So you know, what's the worst thing when you, you don't want to cry? You can't cry, not in front of her. What's the worst thing a teammate can do when you that emotion? You about to be that emotional? Oh, you are. Right. That's you on it. The back. <laughs> That's it. And then, and then it starts flowing. You know, and all of a sudden your your vision gets blurry and stuff yeah. like that. And I'm trying to get out, and Pam is hitting me from behind. Don't you? Don't you give it to her? Don't you give her to her? And then Pam's like, "Don't touch her. Don't touch her." And Pam's hitting me in my back. <laughs> And so, uh, yeah, so halftime comes. I'm going to start the second half, go, you know, on the court. She goes, come here, Miller. I'm like, what now? She goes, where do you think you're going? I'm like, coach, I'm going in the game. She says, no, you're not. She goes, sit down. And I'm not talking about on the bench. You see where that water cooler is? Down there. And I was like, and the players are like, they looked at me, they looked at her, <laughs> and they looked down at the end of the I'm like, <laughs> this is the walk of shame, guys. Yeah. This is the walk of shame. Walk down there. Eventually, she puts me back in. Now there's a beef. I can't look at her. She won't look at me. Then we have to do individual meetings, you know, kumbaya. Coach wants to tell you what you are, what you aren't. And I'm just thinking, Lord, please don't let I, 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 I'll hit her if she says anything. <laughs> if she gets in my face, I'm going to hit her, Lord. And there goes my gold medal. There go, Mom and Dad's going to have to come up here. This is going to be a bad scene. <laughs> so I ended up calling my mom and telling her before the whole meeting. She goes, don't worry about it. We're just going to pray. Let's pray. And I said, okay. She prayed. And I said, all right. She goes, but Pearl, Mama Pearl, don't you dare hit that woman. I said, I won't. She goes, but tell her one thing. I said, yeah. Tell her she can't win a gold medal without you. Mm -hmm. Sure enough, when Pat came in, <laughs> she goes, you want to know why I said what you did? I said, I don't know, coach. I don't know why you do half of that. I don't know why I do. Why? Why? She goes, because you don't play the game the right way. Mm. I was like, okay, so you're talking about defensively? She goes, no. Offensively? Do, do I share the ball? She goes, no. Great passer. I said, then what don't, how, how do I not play the game right? She goes, what's with all the antics? And you know, I haven't forgotten the cartwheel. Now, see, this is all about that <laughs> cartwheel. That cartwheel. I said, I'm sorry about that. She's like, no, but why do you have to celebrate? You celebrate on, you know, on a lap. You celebrate when you hit a shot. Why? I said, because I mean, that's, that's how I play. I love the game. Mm -hmm. it, I, I, I'm not showboating. I'm not a hot dog like you like to call me. I just love the game. And she goes, I said, can we just, I know you're strict. Can we just find a common ground? The common ground is that gold medal. And she goes, yes, it is. And I said, coach, just so you know, you can't win a gold medal without me. <laughs> and she turns around, she goes, yeah, I know. And she <laughs> walks out. And from that, we were cool. Mm. We were cool. But it was, it was the greatest moment to win a gold, not only just a gold medal, but to have my parents in the stands and to put that gold medal around my mom and then my dad and just acknowledge everything that they did for me growing up. R.I.P. Pat Summit. That's a nice story. I like that. <laughs> no, that, was, that was... And God bless her. Rest in peace. When you start winning Player of the Year award, Nate Smith's, like, 
three Naismith Awards. Like, that's crazy. Like, crazy. The expectations for you is, is so high and you winning so much awards. Like, did you ever think about, like, what I'm going to do after this? If I'm going to go overseas? If I'm going to... Yeah, well, you said it from the very beginning. There was no WNBA. Yeah. Um, it, it was to go overseas. That was the plan. Mm -hmm. I graduated and my fallback was always going to be somehow broadcasting. And what degree? No idea. But it was a random pickup game. I'll never forget it. Now, in one of the gyms on campus, playing against football players. At USC? Play, at USC. Off season. My season's done. My yeah. senior year, everything's done. And a guy falls in front of me, jump over him, and pop. And that was my knee. That was your knee. ACL, meniscus. Partial tear of the lateral. Lateral. Back, back, yeah. Back then, no, that's like, back then, they didn't have that the was technology no, and stuff no, they had now to, to get you right. That it, was a. It was a wrap. But yeah. in my head, I'm thinking I can do this until the doctor came in, Dr. Richard Dill, and he goes, Well, you had a great run, and I guess it's time for you to have kids. I was like, I'm like, mm -hmm. it's over? Like that's, yeah. and that was you talking about life and reality and that in that moment, yeah. Swirling in my head, I'm 13. I'm in high school. I've won this. I've won four championships in high school. Uh, two champ, gold medal. Over. Over. Devastation, and. I didn't know what I was going through then, but I know talking about a deep depression mm -hmm. because my identity, I'm Cheryl Miller. Yeah. Now, wh who am I now? Yeah. Right. Where do I go? And that was the best and biggest challenge of my life. When you first heard it was going to be a WNBA, mm -hmm. how did you feel? You feel about it was about time? It was a long, it was obviously, it was about time. But it was the perfect time. Mm -hmm. You've got, you know, Dawn Staley, Lisa Leslie, Cheryl Swoops, and yeah. Rebecca Lobo, Lobo. Yeah. Tara Vanderveer, their head coach, 1996 Atlanta. Yeah. I mean, well, they put problem. on a show. Yeah. yeah, they did. Yeah, they put on a show. And the wonderful thing is, outside of their gold medal success, sprung two professional women's leagues. Yeah. And I was like, okay, that's cool. Yeah. That was real cool. But I um, was so happy, and I, I always, you know, I love David Stern, but what he did, those first three years of the WNBA, did such a great, a great job of making sure that you guys, the men, and the organizations supported us. Yeah. Not only just coming to watch the games, but financially, because not every team could pull their weight. Yeah, right. But we call you know we called you guys our big brothers. Yeah. You know when you guys come into the game, gave us instant credibility and more credibility, and it was wonderful to see women's basketball just explode by just the WNBA stepping on the floor and the women, you know the young ladies who are watching now could see our talent. Yeah. And it wasn't just the Final Four or the yeah. Sweet right. Sixteen. Yeah. Yeah. You know, where it's very out. the NCAA is very limited. Now this was their sports team. Yeah. This was their you know their league. Yeah. To see how it evolved now, to see the women evolve, like the way they dunking and have you the been moves, one of the first like, uh, ever dunk in a game? I I I I I dunked. There's my dunk. <laughs> and there's Brittany Griner's done. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Yeah. When I saw her drive baseline at Baylor and then dunk on somebody, and I'm not talking like the one handed, like, yeah. you know, if you not if you six like twelve, you better be dunking. You really dunk. You know, but two handed and then do like, you know how y'all hang. Swing. Ah! Yeah. I was like that was, that was how we felt when we saw remember we saw Sylvia Files when she yes. got came to the sky. Like oh. she like when she came to the sky, they worked out at the same gym at Hoops where we were at, uh -huh. like kinda toward the end she of that was a whole beast too. Listen, 
when I like we coming in, I'm like, yo, like they was like, yeah, they got they got the girl from um, LSU to be. She nah, she be dumb. Like, do she be dumb? Do she know? Like, man, we coming out the weight room one day. She did like a little screen. They hit it with the bounce pad. She. Boom, and swung around. I said, oh, shit. I said, I went back in. I said, yo, they was like, I told you she, I said, no. No, you didn't no, see what this was. No, she dunking like, for real. Yeah, that was like, she was like the first one. I was like, yeah, damn, damn. Then, like like you say, Brittany, like, it's, it's, it's the but whole. Yeah, Sylvia was nasty. Mm. Yeah. She was nasty. You, and you could throw that ball down the floor, and she'd go get it, and then finish it like that. Yeah. Like, now you seeing women. Six eight, six nine, dribbling the ball, shooting threes, having running the floor differently. Like the women's game has evolved too. What do you think about that? To seeing it's the natural it's progression being inside out instead of outside in. It's the natural progression. It's the same thing with you know with your league now. Mm -hmm. I mean, before back in the day when you know watching Reggie and everybody else and Dr. J and. You know, you had Bill Lambert who could lay you out and wasn't a foul unless yeah. you were bleeding and right. teeth missing. They weren't calling anything. Yeah. And you talking about, you know, they – and look, it's no disrespect to Steph. Steph, great, great, great point guard, one of the best. You could, mm -hmm. He's definitely in the argument yeah. along with Magic Johnson. But Steph didn't have to put up with the constant this. Grabbing and – I mean, no, no, we ain't talking about grab. We talking about holding. Oh, I saw. We talking and it about like that. It was like a five second hold. If it was past five seconds, then it was a foul, <laughs> right? Yeah. But yeah. now you you had to lay you know lay off. But it was a natural progression to see from when I played to the next level to Cheryl Swoops in college yeah. when she was in Texas, and then you know you look at UConn and you mm -hmm. got Tarazi. Yeah. You know, and now now it's like it's elevated, and Maya then Moore, a lot of the, no. yeah Maya Moore, um, shoot, and uh, it's, she's gonna kill. Oh, my favorite, Candace Parker. Candace Parker. Now you, she had the whole package. The whole yeah. package. The whole package. They had like six eight. Six eight, and what what was dis like disarming? I should say about her. Beautiful woman, but nasty yeah, on the yeah. inside. <laughs> yes. Like mean. <laughs> Talk bad to you. Oh my gosh. Yeah. CPA you know, and I'm like, I mean, it was Jekyll I and Hyde, it. boy. I mean, she get off the court and you're like, oh, just oh, she's so friendly, but on the yeah. court. Woo -hoo! Yeah. Killer. What, what Killer. do you what do you think about that? Cause I I I love the women aggression in mm -hmm. in women's sports. But you know, the outside world feels like well, some in the outside world. I'm not saying all the outside world. Mm -hmm. Feel like they don't want women to be to show that emotion or show that aggression like that. What do you feel about that? Go watch golf then. <laughs> <laughs> Change the channel. I mean, because it, we're we're not changing. Yeah. Um, if anything, if you could, if you can't stand us, come on, guys. If you can't stand us showing emotion, a killer mentality. Killer yeah. mentality, right? What about the younger kids? The, the, you know the college kids now they got the eyelashes i don't know how they can see but they yeah, all I've the way saying, out I've here been that, i yeah. mean they step on the court and the lids are like this yeah <laughs> i don't yeah. know how they shoot but they get it how done the, they stop the sweat oh from man getting in. and then yeah. the lipstick and the make and, and and if they drop an eyebrow hey time out Put it back on and then score about 90 on you. Definitely true. You see, and unapologetic. Yeah. And I love it. And I think it's great for women's basketball. Like the, the momentum you get, like last year's finals. And like when we seen Stewie, Stewie and Asia go at it in the Western Conference finals and how the finals was was so live. Seeing the the women's NCAA finals, seeing just how women's oh, basketball man. is kind of taking a new phenomenon. Yeah, and I how was proud there at the final of four was crazy. Yeah, yeah how proud was. of you of the women's game and you know your your name being a part of this women's game so growing it to be where it's at right now. And I'm glad you said something, a part of it. Yeah. Because that's all I want to be is yeah. a part of it. You don't, I, I don't need to be up in the conversation of who was the greatest or anything else. If anything, if anybody ever says about me that I would like embrace, mm -hmm. 
and she paid it forward. Mm-hmm. If you give me that due that I, I paid it forward, and hey, Cheryl, I remember. And I think the younger players are doing a better job, but I'm saying women in general, mm-hmm. and, and I don't care if they get mad at me, ladies, if you want everybody to respect in women's basketball, then support one another. Mm-hmm. That's real stuff. And that commercial is brought to you by. Um, <laughs> but no, but, but, but for real, that's, and that's the one thing I need us to embrace is I want the younger players to understand that there was people before them. There were athletes before Always. them. There, mm-hmm. you know, there were people that I played against at Long Beach State. Nobody knows of Latanya Pollard. Mm-hmm. Shot like Steph Curry. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a lot of women out there. Chris that Jackson. Need, oh. Abdul Rahul. Right? <laughs> yeah, there's always somebody before you. Like, uh, that's why we try to show, pay the proper homage and pay respect to mm-hmm. just what we grew up on. You know, in the history, if you're the lover of this game, that's why we kind of right. created this. To, we love women's all. Oh, like, we, like, yeah, you know, like, we ain't just, we, we really rock with it. My mama played. Basketball won a state championship with Dorothy Gators, Cappy Pond, oh, yeah, 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 Marshall. Yeah. So yeah, so my okay. so she put the ball in my hand. So we got much love and respect for oh, the women's wow. game, just basketball in general. We love hoops. So But see, that's what I and then you guys have always been there. And that's what I love about it. And there's such a com- uh, camaraderie. And you guys have taught us how to celebrate, you know, and the your Hall of Fame is the Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. And we have a Women's Hall of Fame, mm-hmm. and not to discount that whatsoever, but mm-hmm. man, we need to take this to there. Yeah, That's what we need to do. And then when I talk about this, we need to keep talking like you guys. I, I mean, I can still remember doing commercial or commercial, you know, for whatever, reading and stuff, and going to Philadelphia and, and playing mm-hmm. with Dr. J. Mm-hmm. Thing, like memories like that. Yeah. So I remember when. Yeah. I remember when. You was like one of them first former athletes to kind of like put that lane into place, especially like at Turner Sports, like being sideline. Because one of my biggest moments in my career when I won a three-point shootout in Denver in Denver. Uh, 05, you were up there you interviewing me and gave me a trophy. It? And I was like, I got you that picture. It. I got that show, that picture at home with me up that. there. And I'll never forget that. So how, how did you get into the whole going into Turner? Well, when I first started out broadcasting, they, oh, man, a thousand years ago, <laughs> they had me uh, doing sidelines for college football. Mm-hmm. And I, I love football, love watching it. Love, I love the sport. I don't know anything about the sport, <laughs> but I love the sport. So that didn't work out too well. And I was horrible. I yeah. was horrible and having to, you know, learn the whole business and, right. you know, just it was so much. And then you have people in your ear, your producers in your ear, and you wear an earpiece yeah. and you're trying to have a conversation. And they're like, well, Cheryl, and this is my first time. Well, Cheryl, ask him this. I was like, what do you want me to ask him? <laughs> <laughs> On TV. Yeah. My mom's like, who are you talking to? I said, mom, you don't want to know. But things like that. But I was coaching. Um, Lisa Leslie and Tina Thompson at uh, US, uh, USC. Yeah. And Turner called. And it was my third year. And I had coaching, broadcasting, NBA, SC. That was a decision for me, but I loved it. And the wonderful thing, and I think my career in broadcasting, especially sideline, I was very fortunate that a lot of the older players had seen me yeah. play. Carl Malone's, the Stocktons, yeah. Jordan. So it was nothing for them to come up to me after a game. Normally you gotta, you know, grab, you know, Kinda here. you gotta yeah. grab them, hold them, or you have to go to someone else, you know, their PR person. It was just, it, it can be a nightmare, but it was like, you know, and they paid me homage and they listened and they, it was the respect. Yeah, Jeff, I often say that like, like your peers, like, cause it's, it's, it, it got to a point where you, like you say, they respect you, but, Everybody in the NBA, like all of us, had a well, still has. I ain't gonna say had a, but still has the, I don't the, mind the had much <laughs> like high respect for you. You know I what I'm saying? That. Always wanted to do an interview by you, like for for to hear that from the generations before and after to always want that. What does that mean to you? I've been blessed. <laughs> I've been I've been blessed. I've 
I feel that there has always been a, um, a divine design on my life and a hand on my life. Yeah. And my life worked out great when I just listened to that divine voice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, but um, the blessing comes when I can sit down with you two and, and hear that. Because it means the world to me. And you guys have taught me um, the one thing that it meant the most to me is that you guys trusted me. Yeah. And that I would never throw shade. Yeah. I would never. I learned my lesson the hard way because in the business, you had to get that one scoop. You had to be yeah. that, you know, yeah. ask that one question. Yeah. And I remember in, I was in studio on NBA TV probably maybe my 10th year, it was around the, it was the same time, well, it was the incident when Latrell Sprewell grabbed PJ, Carlissimo. So PJ, yeah. Right? He had enough, yeah. he went to choke him out. <laughs> yeah. Well, I got inside information, and nobody could find Latrell. He, yeah. wasn't, he wasn't speaking, wasn't saying anything. Well, I knew who his agent was through my brother Reggie. Yeah. They shared the same agent, and um, the person I would go to who was underneath uh, the attorney, Arn Tellum, was, was Gail Diastino. And I asked her, hey, what's going on? Can you give me this and this? And she says, well, you know, are you going to release anything? I got the inside scoop. Right. So she kind of gives me a general idea of what's going to be said. So I, I run with it. Mm-hmm. I run with it. Don't ask. Don't do anything. Ran with it. Well, I had Arn Tellum call me on my cell. And tell me, just ask me, where did you get this from? I said, I just got a scoop. Where did you get it from? He goes, Cheryl, I won't be mad. I won't be mad. I said, okay, well, Gail gave it to me. And he goes, well, I just want you to know I'm going to go on air right now. I'm going to call you a liar that you don't know what you're talking about and um, how disgraceful you are as a broadcaster and whatnot. Mm. He did. (laughs) Mm. He did. And I learned a valuable lesson that night. And Latrell wouldn't speak to me. He wouldn't even look at me. And it wasn't until maybe seven years after the whole incident that he finally spoke to me. And I had to apologize. I mean, it wasn't even, I just couldn't function without telling him how sorry I was. Yeah. And yeah. Once, that was at, once that was over, he's like, it was cool. I'm, I'm good with it. No, you were. I said, no, you weren't at the time. He said, no, I hated you. <laughs> I said, so that we're, we're, we're cool with that. But again, anytime. I knew something was coming on the bad side, coming down on one of you guys. I pull you aside and I go, look, they have this, this, this on on you. Do you want to get ahead of it or not? Yeah. Well, sure, I don't know what to say. Well, okay, you tell me what happened. And they would tell me, okay, clean it up here and clean it up here. And I said, don't start rambling because you're going to sound like you're guilty. (laughs) (laughs) Just don't start rambling. Stick to the script. Stick to what you say. You say it right. Clearly. I said, don't open up that door. No stuttering or not. No, no. You start stuttering. No. uh Speaking of Reggie, (laughs) like, how proud and and amazed of his career and, and, and him and how he carried himself over the years and... How he was just a first player. I don't want to say that Reggie grew up with a chip on his shoulder, but I can understand why he did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you ain't give him no slack. I ain't give him no slack. And it wasn't just me, my two oh, older but... brothers, but Reggie, you're talking about putting in the time. Yeah. You know, that there's no such thing as someone with a perfect form and yeah. all that. No, it's how much time you're putting into that shot. Yeah. If you got a whack shot and you you it's working that in, whack shot. And it's going think, in. It's going in. <laughs> and you putting in that work. That So many coaches, when Reggie was coming, wanted to change his shot. Because when he shot the ball. He shot with a. It would come out. It would <laughs> flick out. Yeah. Um, but that's his his work ethic and the fact that he wasn't afraid. That's where we were different. From the very beginning, Reggie wasn't afraid to take the last shot. Yeah, Yeah. for sure. I was, Reggie was, I don't care, and I was, I wish upon a time. (laughs) (laughs) It goes in, one of those. I wish, I don't care. And that suited him throughout 
his life and his career. Give me the ball. I'll be the hero or the goat. I could live with both. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And most killer shooters were like that. They don't care. Get they. He craved the big moment. He would make a small moment a big moment. And for me to watch him do incredible things, the game against the Knicks, are you kidding me? Yeah. What was it? Was it nine points in, in seven? Yeah. And, and, and like, that yeah. and to see your 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 baby brother. And killer mode. <laughs> who, who is not only in killer but beast mode, but now that moment. Reggie was a great player, considered a great player, yeah. or a good a good player. He yeah. was a good player. He went from a, a semi good to a superstar. Yeah. Now Reggie's a superstar, and that and it was like that. Yeah. And watching that and knowing that that's 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 my baby boy. That's yeah. who I protected my whole life growing up, and to see him be that great great player and athlete and to know his heart and be a, a great man to have that and he's my brother yeah talking about problem trying not to cry yeah but that, <laughs> how, that's my boy how you feel like he do on the sidelines because now he's he's on the okay, sidelines there's one doing there his, is yeah. one beef that i have with reggie <laughs> <laughs> he's not funny <laughs> I don't know why everybody laughs at his jokes. You're not funny. Yeah. I stopped eating at Wendy's because you're not funny. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> Wendy's, you're funny with the commercial. I'm just playing right I'm just messing with you. But that, but it's, I mean, you guys know the game. But it's one thing to know the game, knowledgeable in this and have, but now you got to put it here. This you guys know it's yeah. not easy. Nah. Oh. And the homework, I see you guys got a volume over here, and it's the preparation yeah. and the homework that you have to do. And he has just become one of the best analysts out there. Where if when I hear him, he's dropping knowledge. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's the one thing definitely you're gonna know. Yeah. He's dropping no- and it's easy to pick up. Yeah. The other guy, like. My, in my opinion, Hubie Brown's the best. Because yeah. Hubie, okay, hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute. Let me just tell you. <laughs> now, let me just tell you what just happened. Yeah. You know that? And he could break the game down. Reggie. Dead on point. Yeah. That's Hubie. <laughs> on point. Now, now, let me, okay, wait a minute. Hold, hold on. Wait a minute. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me, Michael Jordan? Yeah. Uh, unbelievable. But, yeah. You went into the women's. Sports Hall of Fame in 91. Talk about going in 95 into the Naismith Hall of Fame. Like, what was what was that like? Like, could, could you ever fathom something like that? We just went this past, what was that? The last, whenever the last one was for D-Wade. And, like, that was like. That was crazy, isn't Like, it? what D-Wade said, y'all walked into basketball heaven. Like, mm-hmm. why are you alive? <laughs> And that's 100% correct. That's how I felt. <laughs> that, that, that's, right. exa- that's exactly how I felt. And uh, going in my class, Ann Donovan, who you know, passed away, mm-hmm. <clears throat> played against her from Old Dominion. And I've got Cappy. Yeah. <laughs> Kareem. Right. And I'm sitting next that's to Kareem. Or, I mean, Kareem. Yeah. And just talking to him and talking to coaches, former great coaches, former great players, and uh, having a sit-down with Bill Russell. Mm-hmm. And it's like and a reunion. It, Everybody it there. It's crazy. It so is. much love in there. It, it, it <laughs> truly is. And, you know, bless my heart, my dad's there, and yeah. he's got that little Kodak, you know, the one that... <laughs> you know, you're, you're, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and so we moved up because back in the day, it used to be them Polaroids. Hold Polaroid. on, don't move! Come on up. Yeah, shake them, jump. <laughs> but no, but again, it was um, I was able to share it with my family. Yeah, and that's with mom and dad, and that was it was more fun for for them. And I, I, I just I, I couldn't believe I was in it, you know. To be honest, let me ask you about the seventy six team. We just went to the Hall of Fame, and they, we they honored the yeah the seventy six Olympic team, mm-hmm. and a lot of women, not only you got the opportunity to see this on mm-hmm. TV or get a glimpse of this. 
Andy and Myers is a really you know good friend of mine, as well as Nancy Lieberman, my yeah. coach. Yeah, yeah. Now Nancy, ooh, you talking about personality? personality. <laughs> Come on now. Yes. No, but to have those two and to know them, and know what they went through throughout their careers, um, on and off the court, breaking into, like, you know, you were talking about broadcasting, and Myers was the first. Mm -hmm to be an analyst, mm. um, to call a game in the NBA. She was doing that before any woman was doing. So mm. she really, you know, set the bar and the standard. And Nancy's been that. Nancy, I tell you, she if she's not a billionaire, <laughs> because nobody knows how to like, seriously, it's not a bad thing. It's a great, she knows her strength, how to market herself. Yeah. She's got a great feel for the, and respect yeah. men for men and women. Yeah. So, Man, but the awesome. '76 team, they were they were the beacon for women's basketball and yeah. always will be. And it was long overdue. overdue. Yeah, because like now they're getting just in the Hall of Fame now, and and like I didn't know about it when I got there, mm -hmm. and then. How they broke it down the whole presentation. Yeah, it was awesome. It was dope. I was Dude. like, oh, that's, that's like crazy. where they played. Yeah, it yeah. was crazy. Yeah, it was. It was a good. Like I said, no. that was amazing to be a part of and to be down there and experience all of that. Start bench trade. You got to start one. You got to bench one. You got to trade one. Okay. Oh. You said start one, bench one, I'm or trade, trade one. one. Yeah. I'm gonna try to go errors. Uh, Cheryl Swoops, Maya Moore, Stewie. Who do you start? Who do you bench? Who do you trade? Are they at the prime? <laughs> prime everybody. Prime uh, everybody? Prime everybody. Oh. Start Maya. Cheryl off the bench. I would trade Stewie. Okay. You got on the Equality and Women's Sports oh, yeah. T-shirt and you repping that. Like, how how proud are you to see, were you to see just like, like you said, you were at the Women's Final Four and yes. how how much they put on. Like, it was for real. Like, it was great basketball, a great show. People watched. And, you know, like, you had LSU and Angel Reese and, and Flaugé doing what know, they were yeah. doing. Angels you had Caitlin too. on a run. You got Paige coming back this year. It's going to be like... Yeah, South Carolina doing what they doing, Coach Staley, and, and like, how excited are you for And you, you can't forget Kim Mulkey, who's my, I call her Liberace. Hey, Kim Mulkey. She, she's, yeah. she's the Liberace, man. <laughs> she came out there looking like Elvis and Liberace, right, with the man. Fit. She don't yeah. care. With the fit, but I love that about her. But it was, it was great for me to be there because of the shirt that I'm wearing right now, equality in women's sports. And the back says, we deserve to be here. Mm -hmm. And this was all from a good friend of mine who's coaching currently at RCC, Riverside Community College, and she's she's suing and she's she's suing the school and she's in the battle of her life mm. from being threatened, run off the road, wow. uh, having her budget cut just recently, having um, the protest game where these shirts were originated began mm -hmm. with the men's basketball team blocking the entrances. So people, the spectators couldn't come in. Um, an AD who's no longer there, everybody with their, you know, ostriches with their heads in the sand and uh, no help on the way. Mm -hmm. So this is in my backyard. I'm taking on her fight and it's a movement now. Mm -hmm. And it's really kind of propelled me into this new um, adventure uh, that I'm with. Uh, it's called Breaking Barriers for All Foundation, and it's about equality. It's about addressing, you guys see, the, the social climate that we're in today mm -hmm. and empowering men and women, not just athletes, yeah. but using and teaching them, educating, empowering them to use their voice and their platform. Come on now. We're, we're, mm -hmm. we're just, you know, a couple, yeah. you know, fingers away from <laughs> right. really being, you know, an advocate for whatever justice that you want to to do and that's why breaking barriers and our foundation once we get it up and running that's what we're going to do and we're starting at hopefully from the ground like we're talking high school and maybe great or not on grade school but junior junior high mm -hmm. but letting these kids understand that they do have power yeah. and it's in their voice 
That's what's up. Tina Thompson and Lisa Leslie. Mm -hmm. Like, you coached them and to see their Hall of Fame careers yep. unfold. Just tell how proud to just see where they came from at USC to where they're at now. Well, I was very fortunate to have the opportunity to coach those two. Um, Lisa was the baddest, meanest big girl <laughs> that I've ever seen. And she had, she advertised have elbow, uh, elbows, elbows yeah. and will use. And she <laughs> knew how to clear a space. Tina Thompson, hands down, the smartest player I ever coached in my life. Yeah. I mean, talking like, I know the game. I know the adjustments I need to make. She's coming out, coach. They're killing us here, here, here. Let's kind of turn this around like, is it going to work? She says, yeah, it's going to work. You know, that type of thing. <laughs> right. Like, student of the game. Yeah. Um, so to see them take, and the hard work they put in and their families and the dedication to the sport um, on and off the court and to be rewarded it, you know, for the Hall of Fame was tremendous. Yeah. So proud of them. The number 31, you wore it, Reggie wore it. Is it special or is it just, it was a just, it just happened to be your number? No, it, it, it was, it's special because my brother Daryl um, was a catcher for the Angels. Mm -hmm. And so he wore 31, so that was, you know. It ran on down. Hey. So the family number got, 31. Got to pass it down, 31, 31, 31. And the fact that I was born on the 3rd. Of January three and one. Mm -hmm. Who was the goat in men's basketball? Who would you? I want your opinion of who you would say is the best the greatest player ever. of all time. Yeah, you've seen a lot of basketball, so you know a lot. So the greatest of all time. Front row seat. Killer. Incredible work ethic. Mind. Mind can elevate everyone around them, can destroy whatever scheme, defensive, you know, sets that you may have. You know what you got to say, right? <laughs> I would go with Q. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I used to bust his ass all the time. It can't be, it can't be him. I used to bust his ass all the time. It can't be him. <laughs> Gave me, yeah. <laughs> well, um, Michael Jordan. You think Mike? Out of all the basketball you've seen up to this point, you think Mike is the one? Kobe, Kobe, Kobe was the closest, but Mike. What Mike, you just said? Mm. Get you talk the, the other part. You said who? Kobe was the closest. Mm -hmm. You disagree? I no, agree. we agree. I just, he heard me say this plenty of times. I feel we like agree. Kobe uh, gets disrespected uh, in the oh, conversation. No, no. I, feel like, I feel like they just no. didn't. Like, Kobe, Roy and John Jr., y'all yeah. must have forgot. Like, what? what? Like, I, I, oh, Greg had to play against him. So. <laughs> I know you guys remember this because it was, it was on television. And, and watching Kobe his rookie year, and he's playing, and it's, it's in Chicago. And Michael has just done something. I mean, just something sick. He's always doing something sick. And him and Kobe are at the free throw line, and Kobe's looking like talking. Like, mm -hmm. And, you know, there's, there's talking talk, but there's like, hey, what are you doing, this and this? And I remember asking Kobe, I said, Kobe, what are you talking to Michael about? He says, I asked him how I could stop him, how I could beat him. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, what did Mike say? He said, he said, you could never work that hard. You could never that work that hard. And he said, as soon as he said that to me, I locked myself in the gym whenever I could get on the court. And I studied. He said, I studied every move that Mike. And you watched him from his first and second or third year. Did you not think it was Mike? It was a yeah. Everything. It was he a mirror. Was, you oh see the clips gosh. and stuff on, so like when they going into fadeaways. Oh, yeah, yeah. In the middle when he turned around mirror. that fadeaways. Lay up. Lay and, whatnot, up. and that drop step, uh, uh, side step and back. Yeah, and yeah. Oh, my gosh. He, he would. It was Mike. Right. But Jordan was, he was something else. Did you ever think Kareem record would be broke? Never. I didn't think it was going to be broke either. Never. Nobody's going to break LeBron record. 
Uh, he's still getting points right now. Okay, I'm gonna ask you a question for real, for real. What did you think when he when he broke the record? First of all, I'm so glad that Kareem was there. Yeah, and that yeah. shows his class. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Were you surprised the flack that LeBron got? It no, wasn't like everybody. Not in this generation, just not because of the way the climate is. Every, you can't, you can't just have success and it just be cool. Somebody gonna yeah. say something. It's just I, like he I, shouldn't I, I have get, got any yeah, flat. I get somebody's gonna say something, but to the point where, how could he? Have, you know, how could he break that record? How could he? Well, what? Wait around for somebody else. Somebody was gonna do it. Somebody's gonna Listen, do it. But, but for him to do it, yeah. past first guy who's never been known yeah. at any point as like a scorer or a I think it was alone. coming in. That's what everybody used to kill him for. Yeah. Right? Yeah. He doesn't he have a shot. He got yes. Score. Yeah. You know like, what? I was impressed for about the longevity because to even get an attempt at this record, you gotta play twenty. And like them 18 All Stars, them 19 All Stars. No, out of I agree. 20. Now I'm gonna have to rethink this whole thing with Jordan because LeBron, you, <laughs> LeBron's up there too. LeBron is definitely, definitely up there. there. He's definitely up there. He on that Mount Rushmore for sure. Oh no, no, yeah, yeah. This has been amazing. We appreciate you so on, much. Guys. We are honored. Come on. Come we on. had the great. The yes. great, the great yes. Cheryl Miller, I everybody. That. Reggie told me that we had the 18 today. You got Cheryl Dean. That's what he told me. <laughs> <laughs> you got the 18. So we just blessed with the 18. Thank you, Reg. Today. Thank you, Red.